Hi, my name is Lexi Jong and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to do a get ready with me video using the Shantapay products from my most recent haul and I'll leave that link up above if you are interested. All right, before we get started, I'm going to pull my hair back and I'll be right back. I don't have anything on my skin right now other than skincare, which I put on actually a couple hours ago at this point. We're going to start off with the Shantakai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. This has SPF 15 and I use the shade Alabaster. This is not the first time that I have purchased this, but it is a new tube. So let's go ahead and get started. A lot of times I'll just put this on with my hands and I'll actually leave this in my bathroom and just put it on after skincare and just that'll be it. But today I'm going to apply it more like a traditional foundation. So I'm going to put some on my face and then we'll go ahead and blend it in with a brush. I'm going to use the Guerlain Essentiel foundation brush and just kind of smooth this in. Just going to add a little bit more to my cheeks. And while that sits, we're going to go ahead and use the Chantecaille Le Camouflage Stilo. This is the anti-fatigue corrector pen in shade one. And I wanted to compare this to the Sisley Stilo Lumiere, which I'm just about out of. So before I go ahead and apply this, I'm going to show you a clip from yesterday of me applying these under each eye and an update at the end. I'm going to apply the Chantecai Le Camouflage Stilo in shade one underneath my right eye and the Sisley Stilo Lumiere in shade one under my left eye. Okay, these are the eyes before setting powder. Using the Sonia G Mini Cheek Brush and the Pat McGrath Under Eye Blurring Powder in shade light, I'm going to just add a light dusting of powder underneath both eyes. kind of see everything. I'm just gonna, I like to tap the powder in afterwards. I don't have anything on my finger. It has been eight hours since I applied my makeup. I forgot to do an earlier check-in, but this is the side with the Chantecaille, and this is the side with the Sisley. You can see I do have some mascara flaking this because I am getting to the end of that life cycle on that mascara. But other than that, I think both of them have held up pretty similarly. Pretty much the same amount of lines on both sides. Um, you know, no real noticeable issues with either of them. They both have creased a tiny bit and have a little accumulation, but nothing major. Now, what I didn't show in the clip was after eight hours, I didn't get a chance to film an additional update, but I did have my makeup on for over 12 hours yesterday. And by the time I went to go take it off, I noticed that the Chantecai one was still holding up just as well as I had at the eight hour update. Whereas the Sisley, I had significantly more creasing. Now, whether to say that's because of the product, I really don't know because this is about a year old and it's just about empty. 
So if it were a fresh tube, I'm not really sure if you know the results would be exactly the same. So in my opinion, I feel like these two products are pretty comparable. Just a quick comparison of these. The Sisley Stilo Lumiere comes with one of these like sponge tip applicators and you twist the bottom to get the product to come up from the top. I'm not even sure if you can see it. Again, this is really almost empty, so I only get little bits coming up now. Whereas the Shantikai here is a click pen, so it has this paint style brush and the liquid will pop up. At first glance, the Sisley one may seem more expensive because if I remember correctly, I think it's $66 and this is actually going to be 0.08 ounces or two and a half milliliters. Whereas the Shantikai one is a little less expensive, but it is smaller. So it's 1.8 milliliters or 0.06 fluid ounces. And the Shantikai is made in France and the Sicily is also made in France. Just a swatch of these. So you can kind of see the color difference. This is shade one for both of them. Up here we have the Shantikai and this is the Sisley Stilo Lumiere. So you can see that the Sisley is going to be a lot peachier and the Shantikai is going to be more like a light golden champagne shade. It is more neutral on the spectrum compared to this peachy shade. Just to show you what these look like spread out, just kind of smear these out. And you can see that the Sisley is really going to deposit more color. And this peachy shade is really good for brightening. But the Shantikai is going to be a little bit more neutral. And it does offer a little bit of brightening. I think the biggest difference between these two products is going to come down to the color. I actually just put on just the tiniest bit from the pen. It's gonna, this is the Ciroc concealer brush. And I'm using more of a tapping motion than a brushing motion. I'm just gonna add a touch more. And although this might look like a lot, it's actually the thinnest layer. So I really don't have very much on. After tapping it on with the brush, I do like to just kind of press it into my skin. I feel like pressing the concealers into my skin under the eye areas in particular kind of helps prevent some of the creasing. This is in Shantikai, but I did just receive this in the mail yesterday evening, and I'd like to start testing it out before I do a review. So we're gonna start testing it today. This is the new Sisley Phyto Pudra Compact in shade number one, rosy. And it comes with this red velvet pouch, and you can see it actually has an elastic band here to secure the flap. And here's the compact. This is made in Italy. It's 0.42 ounces or 12 grams. Have a mirror at the top. And then this is going to be a little, little puff, but it's you can see it's really thin. And this is kind of like a faux leather piece here. And this is your traditional puff material. Again, we do have a plastic guard. I'm actually just gonna take my finger here and let's go ahead and just see what that looks like there. This is supposed to be a, a translucent shade. This powder comes in three shades. There is rosy and natural, which are both supposed to be translucent. The rosy one looks a little bit lighter, so that's why I purchased this. And then there's a third shade, which is bronze, and that should be a deeper powder. And I feel like that would actually be considered translucent for people with a deeper complexion. 
I'm just going to apply some on my finger and tap it under my eyes before brushing it onto the rest of my face. Okay, that kind of made my under eye area look a bit crepe crepey. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can dust some of that off using the Sonia G Mini Cheek Brush. All right, I'll play with that later, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna try this powder on the rest of my face. Using the Surat Face Brush, just gonna dust some of this on. Okay, so that is half the face. It definitely does mattify and it has a bit of a blurring effect. First impressions, I like what it did to my face. The texture of it is very smooth and silky and I like the blurring effect. It's pretty translucent, but I do think that it did lighten things up just a tad. And I do not like what it did to my under eye area. So I wouldn't use this under the eyes, but I'm gonna be playing around with this before I do a review on this. So that's just a first impression. Taking the tiniest bit of a drop of the Chanel Rosy Light Drops, and I'm just gonna tap that under my eyes here. Just hoping the moisture there kind of helps out. Okay, that looks much better. It's not as dry from the powder now. I really do like the way the powder looks on my skin though. Next up, I'm going to apply the Real Bronze in Goa and I'm using the Chikahodu F04 brush. A little bit too much there. Moving on to blush, I'm going to use the Radiant Chic Cheek and Highlight Duo in Rose. And I'm using the Surat Cheek Brush. I'm taking the Chantecaille Buff and Fleur Brush and this compact from the Holiday Collection. This is the Eclat Dew Face Powder. I'm just going to kind of buff in everything that I have to kind of soften this effect on my cheeks. Okay, I think that looks a lot more natural and the bronzer and blush have kind of blended a little bit better back here. For highlight, I'm going to take the highlight from this duo. I'm using the Chikahodu Z2 brush. Just gonna use a tiny bit. Carry it a little bit right above my eyebrows here and right down my nose. Just going in for my eyebrows with the Surat Expressionist Eyebrow Pencil. This is the blonde shade. The brown is too deep for me. This is a little bit too light for me, but I think I can get away with it. I'm just taking the spoolie end and running through that. Kind of softens up the pigment from the pencil and makes everything blend in a bit. I'm just gonna finish this off with the Surat Expressionist Brow Pomade, and this is a clear. I'm 
Sometimes I'll run through it with the spoolie after I put it on the pomade and that just gives an even softer effect, but today I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna move you in a bit closer and we're going to do eyes. Okay, for my eyes, I'm gonna start off with the Mermaid Eye Matte in Olivia and I'm using the Sonia G Soft Shader. I'm just gonna spread this all over. And I am turning it as I go into the crease a little bit. So this is the shade Olivia and I really like this as a one and done kind of shade. It's just a really nice soft gray and they call it gray, but there is actually a tint of brown to it. So it's almost like a taupe, but not quite brown enough to be considered a taupe. Next, I'm going into the Mermaid Eye Color in Seashell, and this is a shimmer shade. I'm using the Refer 15 brush, and I'm just gonna swirl a bit on the tip, and I'm going to go into the crease with this and go a little bit above. So I'm kind of going over the Olivia shade. This time I'm going up even higher, and I'm going right under the eyebrows. Sonia G Crease Pro in the Mermaid Eye Color Hematite. I'm just gonna add this to the outer corner. And I'm actually gonna bring this in to just shy of the halfway point. And I'm using a light layer. I'm just gonna add a touch more. And you can see I got some fallout there. I should have tapped my brush off, but I didn't. I just took the Sonia G Mini cheek brush and brushed away the fallout that I had. No issues, it didn't smear or anything. To finish the upper lid, I'm going to go back into seashell with my finger and just tap a little bit of that right over the spot where Olivia and Hematite meet. So it's just off center. To line my eyes, I'm going in. This is the Linda Hallberg 333, and I am using Hematite. Wiping off the brush, going into seashell with the same brush, and I am going to add this to the inner portion of the under eye. Just getting a little bit on the flattened side of the brush to dab in the inner corner. And that's it for the shadows. I did get some fallout using the Hematite again as a liner. That shade is a little drier feeling than the other ones that I have. So I don't know. I didn't really experience any issues with that with Seashell or Triton in the past when I have used those as liners. But the Hematite does seem a bit drier. So I'm just going to brush that away and do my mascara and I'll be right back. Okay, I finished my mascara and I'm just taking the soft shader and going in just in the very tip of the brush and I'm going to add this to my lower lash line. Okay, and by the way, I didn't add any mascara to the lower lashes, only the uppers. Swiping off the soft shader brush and I'm going to go back in with the tip and just kind of smudge everything now that there's no additional shadow. Well, I guess my hair was still a bit damp when I pulled it out. I just had it in a little bit of a bun. 
So I'll take care of my hair later, but before we go on to lips, I just wanted to show you guys some swatches of these shadows. So the Mermaid colors, they are a cream shadow. They're really more of a cream to powder. So they're creamy, but not overly creamy. So they're not like liquidy feeling at all. This is seashell and here is hematite. You can see that this one is just a little crumblier. It doesn't feel less creamy when I'm swatching it or applying it to the skin. It still definitely has a creamy feel to it, but whenever I go in with the brush or my finger, I do get a little sort of like kick up in the pan, but since it's not a powder, it's not really the same consistency. However, it does just brush away super easily, more easily than traditional powder shadows do. And last up, we have Olivia, which is the matte shade. And you can see when I brush this out, that brown tinge to it. So even though it is technically gray, it's really gonna be a little bit more taupey. Now going through these shades, we have Seashell, which is more of a golden champagne shade. It's really a soft gold and it leans warm. Hematite is a brown base with a hint of plum or purple mixed in. So if I smudge it out, you can see more of a chocolate brown. And this one's different because a brown base is definitely warm and the purple is cool. So it ends up being a bit more neutral overall. And then, as I mentioned before, Olivia here is technically a gray, but it does have a bit of tan or beige mixed into it, a, a light brown. And so it's almost a taupe, but not quite brown enough to be a true taupe. Just to show you, you can see in my hematite how I do have a little bit of like crumbliness from there. And that's from when I was putting the eyeliner brush in there. In contrast, here's Olivia and there is no dust or anything in there. For lips, we're gonna go in with a lip veil in Baobab. And there is Baobab. And I really like this shade. It is a warmer toned, about medium depth, rosy pink shade, but it's a bit warmer. There's definitely a bit more of kind of like a brick red base to it, but it's not deep enough. And I really like it. The texture of the lip veils is always super comfortable on my lips. They're very moisturizing and thin, more of a sheer lipstick type consistency, but I personally, they're one of my favorite lipstick formulas. Thank you for getting ready with me today. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit discombobulated today. But let's go ahead and go over my thoughts on all of the products that I used. The Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer, for me, this is a staple. I always like to have a tube of this on hand. It is a tinted moisturizer with just a touch of SPF, so it is SPF 15. However, I would not rely on it for sun protection. I personally do not apply enough to get the protection from this. And for me personally, I always like to have SPF 30 or above. And this I love. I think it is a great consistency. It's comfortable on the skin. It's not sticky. You don't really have that sunscreen smell to it, which personally I know a lot of people love, but I don't typically like that. And it does provide some coverage. So I love the Just Skin. Moving on to the Le Camouflage Stilo. I am really enjoying this. I've worn this a few times now and you saw the clip earlier comparing it to the Sicily Stilo Lumiere. I feel like the two of them are pretty equivalent in terms of how well they work. And I really feel like it comes down more so to the color, the shade selection that you're looking for. The Shantikai one is a little bit lighter and it's more neutral in coloring. And personally, I just like this shade a little bit better. Consistency wise, they are pretty similar. Right now, the Shantakai does feel a tad thinner to me than the Sicily does, but I'm not sure if that's just because I have an older tube of the Sicily and it's starting to get a little dry. Because again, I'm at the bottom of that tube. 
Overall though, I feel like they both apply very similarly under the eyes and they hold up very well. The Sisley powder, we'll talk about when I do a full review later, but first impressions are that it has a really nice blurring effect on the skin, but I did not like to use it under my eyes. I'll be playing around with this more. The Shantakai bronzer in Goa, I am really enjoying this. I went in a little bit heavier than I prefer today, so I did have to buff some of that out using the A Dew powder, but honestly, I feel like it gave a really nice airbrushed look afterwards, and I like how it joins in pretty naturally with the blush. And again, I used the Radiant Chic Cheek Blush in Rose, which is, up, oh, not this one this one here the one with the whale shark on it and i personally love the shade it's a very soft light pink if you have a deeper complexion the pink is probably too subtle the highlight is nice it's not my favorite i prefer the blush over the highlight but i like the shade of this highlight it's got a nice light golden touch to it because consistency is very nice and it's easy to just get a subtle amount the Surat products I use for my brow, I use these pretty much every day. There's not too much to say about them. I like them. Uh, the brow pencil, I have already repurchased a refill. You know, it's something I definitely like. This is a refillable container. It's got the spoolie on one end and then this pops off to refill. And I personally, I like it. The actual pencil itself is a little bit firm and slightly waxy but not super waxy which is my preference the brow pomade in clear it is a very nice brow pomade and it truly does dry clear i haven't noticed any like white cast or anything however my hair is on the lighter side so i'm not sure how well that would work for people with you know black hair or really dark brown hair but for me i don't notice any white cast and most of the time my brows are not unruly but when they are this really does help keep them in place. Moving on to the Mermaid Eyeshadows. The Mermaid Eye Matte in Olivia, I think is a beautiful shade. I really like it. I love the consistency of these. They're very creamy and smooth going on. You can apply these easily just with a finger or with a brush. And I like all three of the shades that I purchased. However, the Hematite is a little bit drier in consistency than the other ones I have. I have four of the Mermaid Eye Colors and my favorite out of them is the first one I purchased, which is Triton. This here is Triton. Let me just swatch this for you. I'll put that right below here. And you can see it's going to be pretty much a shimmer version of Olivia, but it's a little bit deeper, a little bit browner. So for me, this is more of a true taupe compared to Olivia, but these two would be my two favorites. The A Claude Dew finishing powder or face powder. This was from the holiday collection. I don't even know if this is still available, but I love this powder. It is super creamy and smooth. I do think you might get a little bit of a white cast if you have a deeper complexion with this one, but you can buff it out if you really want to. And I just really think this is a beautiful powder. And last but not least, we have the Chantecaille Lip Veil in Baobab. And let me just put a swatch of that in my hand here. And you can see that it's going to be a rosy shade. It's pretty mid-tone. And again, I think it runs a bit warm. Thank you so much for getting ready with me today. And I hope this was fun for you. And I hope that you will join me again tomorrow as I go over some of my Shantikai favorites from my collection. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay safe.